Hey there, this is Coach Chris Wilson here at the Critical Bench Compound in my office today. I want to do something a little different. I want to talk, obviously, about five things, five essential things that all people must have in order to live their best life. But they are things that we either take for granted, we neglect, or we abuse. And it's worth noting in this video that these are things that we're all, pretty much all have full control over. And life is just a series of choices that we make, good or bad. And so I feel like if we make more good choices than bad choices, when it comes to these five essentials, we can start to optimize our life and live a better life, essentially. Because that's really what I want for you, it's what I want for myself, it's what I want for my coworkers, my friends, my family. Uh, it's being accountable for the important things in life. Oftentimes though, the most important things, the things that are really foundational to our, our life are also the most basic things. And so it's really easy to take these things for granted uh, and not really give them enough thought, to not be mindful of them in your day-to-day -day living because we get so caught up in all the things that we have to do in life how busy we are, our, our family, and you know, uh, devoting time and energy to, to other people, but not to ourselves. So in this video, I want you to reflect a little bit as I talk through these five things about what you can be doing in your life to fix these, to level them up a little bit, to take a little bit more time for yourself, to care a little bit more about your personal health and well-being, because as you do that in life, and I'm sure you've heard this before, the better you are for other people in your life. When you take, uh, take these things for granted, when you don't devote the time and energy that they, they, they require, you're actually doing other people a disservice because you're not your best you. So let's first start with breathing, the breath. Most of us breathe very shallow. We breathe up here, up in our upper chest area. We don't ever sit down and close our eyes and do some deep breathing drills. I'm not talking about even anything like meditation that you necessarily have to do. Just call it deep breathing. Uh, call it just sitting in your car, listening to a song that you like, and just taking some really nice deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, or even in through the nose, out through the nose. And really taking long breaths, long inhales, hold it, long exhales and maybe do that for like one or two songs that really put you in a good mindset. Just doing that alone uh, once a day can do so much for you, for your mind, for your energy, for clarity, for de-stressing, for dealing with anxiety, all those things. So I really ask you to focus a little bit more on your breath and breathing into your belly. Don't breathe so shallow. Breathe in and try to really extend your, your abdomen as you breathe and fill those lungs up as, as, as full as they possibly can be and then exhale every last bit of air in your lungs. And the more you do that, the better you get at the breath. Uh, it, it translates to other good things happening inside your body that are hard to quantify, but it, 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 the breath, it all starts with the breath. If, there, if there's no breath, there's no life. So putting a little extra time and effort into your breath is definitely gonna work in your favor. Number two, something that we all know we do for a third of our life is sleep. And I'm the first one, I point the finger at myself, for not doing as good a job at sleeping as I should be on a regular basis. Sure, I have moments, I have weeks at a time where I, I do really good. You know, I wear one of these little Fitbit things and that tells me, tracks my sleep, tells me how good I am at sleep, where I am in my sleep cycles, when I fall asleep, when I wake up, how often I wake up in the middle of the night. It's good to know those things, but without sleep, and, or if we have irregular sleep, uh, we're not doing a very good job, especially for people that exercise a lot or really into our health and fitness. When you start robbing yourself of sleep, you're robbing yourself of repair and recovery time. So you're not gonna do as good in your workouts because you're not doing as good in the other area, sleep. 
take getting that rest when you need it, letting your muscles recover and rejuvenate so when you wake up the next day you're refreshed. How many of us wake up tired? How many of us wake up feeling like, man, I wish I could go back, I wish I had another hour or two? So typically what most of us need to do is just find a better time, an earlier time to unplug and maybe do something that helps us fall asleep like read or listen to music or uh, anything that's uh, you know just uh, quiet and uh, helps our our minds just kind of break away from the stressors of the day anything like that that relaxes us uh, is very beneficial very helpful and I encourage you to to do that find what that is in your life maybe it's writing sometimes people like to do a, a journal or something for the day anything like that can be extremely helpful and help you just to relax fall asleep more naturally, hopefully earlier in the evening, before midnight, so that when you wake up, say six or seven in the morning, you feel like you got a good quality six to eight hours. Um, seven to nine hours is really the, the range you wanna shoot for, and we all kinda have our own needs when it comes to sleep, but be mindful of your sleep. The third essential to life is hydration. Drinking water, right? Real basic, real simple thing, where most of us fall short. But before I get to that, I wanna ask you to do something after this video. Go down to the pinned comment below this video and click the link that you see for the three-day immune boosting protocol. It's basically a 72-hour fix for your immune system. So if you're looking to improve your immune health, improve immune function, the way your body deals with uh, disease, with deals with sickness, and helps you live your most uh, healthy life possible, then click that and there's a lot of reading there for you to learn a little bit more and see if this uh, fits for you. 72 hours, you can help start to boost your immune function and it's done naturally. So really, really cool stuff. Check that pin comment below this video once I get done talking. Okay, so number three, hydration drinking water. You know, there's a, st a statistic, easy for me to say, that 80 to 90% of us walking around every day are walking around dehydrated. Because so many of us do a lousy job of drinking enough water. But we don't have to walk around with a water jug in our hand all day to be hydrated. But we have to be more mindful of the things that we are drinking besides water that kind of counteract what we're doing. So I'm a coffee drinker. Coffee is a diuretic. Right? A lot of things with caffeine and stuff are diuretics. So what that means is it, it kind of makes you have to go to the bathroom more often. So it can be a, have a dehydrating effect, alcohol as well. So what we have to do to offset that is have a little bit more water in our day. Uh, a real easy way to kind of get around this is with every meal, every time you eat, have a glass of water. Whether that's 8, 10, 12 ounces of water or so. What I also like to do is I like I call it sneaking in water. When I first wake up in the morning before I have any coffee, I always fill my coffee mug full to the top with water and I chug it. Because I feel like at least right there I get like you know 10 to 16 ounces, whatever the size of the mug is, of water right away. Because it's obviously besides breathing, it's like the most important thing that you need in your life, right? And so I do that and then I try to do that any other point in the day when I think about it. If I'm on my way to the bathroom, if I'm uh, on my way to talk to somebody here in the office or make a phone call or anything I do, whenever I think about it, I'm like, oh, just chug a quick glass of water. The more often we do that, the better job we do of increasing that blood volume and it helps everything. It helps cognitive function, it helps your energy levels, it helps uh, your fat metabolism, it helps everything. So do a better job of consuming water throughout your day, but then around dinner time, start to decrease that water intake because you don't want to be up all night long having to go to the bathroom. So I say by six or seven o'clock in the evening, uh, if you do stay up a little bit later, maybe it can be more like eight, but I say start to drink a lot less or stop drinking at all so that you have a period of maybe a few hours before you go to bed where you can really get out a lot of that, um, that fluid and not be waking up in the middle of the night having to go pee too much because that can be really awful for affecting what I touched on secondly, which is your sleep, right? So hydration, do a better job, sneak those glasses of water in, and remember, nothing can replace water. 
even if you're drinking other things, water is is different than anything else you'll be drinking, and it's the most important thing that you should be drinking in your day to day. Okay, number four, the obvious one: what are we eating? Right? You can't live a healthy life, a long life, if you're eating crap all the time. I'm gonna make this real simple for you. A real easy fix is just to focus on eating more clean or whole foods instead of so much processed stuff. So just evaluate in your day, how much stuff am I eating that's coming out of a box that is good for months at a time, that has like a date on it, you know, that uh, sits in cardboard uh, on a shelf somewhere in a store versus how much stuff am I eating that'll spoil fast. You want to have foods that spoil fast in your life. I know that sounds weird, but I'm talking about like blueberries versus, you know, blueberry muffins that are uh, in a package on a shelf. Okay. I'm talking about you know spinach versus having some kind of like over overly processed high sugar you know spinach uh, smoothie from the you know cold uh, from the fridge area you know in in the store. I'm not saying you can't have those things at all. I'm just saying do a better job of evaluating in your life how much you're relying on those foods because I know there's a lot of people that heavily rely on artificially uh, you know sweetened stuff and stuff that's overly processed that has you know 18 to 58 ingredients in it versus eating just whole foods clean foods you know fish potato uh, you know uh, cantaloupe uh, you know a handful of cashews or almonds uh, a salad um, you know things that are minimally processed or really you know just about no processing at all because it's just a natural food item so try to incorporate more of those or I, I call it substitution find a few things that you're willing to substitute for something cleaner and start to make good habits where maybe you had a bad habit if you have a bad habit at night of having a late night bowl of ice cream or bowl of cereal every night Maybe every other night, substitute that with a nut butter, a healthy nut butter, like a cashew or almond butter, with like apple slices, okay? And then try to do that in other areas of your life. I'm not saying you shouldn't ever eat pizza, shouldn't ever have a potato chip. I'm just saying those shouldn't be every day, all day long. The more often you can substitute with clean foods, healthy foods, uh, you're gonna feel the difference, you're gonna see the difference. Your body composition will change. Your body weight might not change a whole lot, but I guarantee you, you'll lean out. You'll lose some body fat and replace that with your muscle. And this directly uh, is affected by the fifth most essential thing, which is movement. So the more we move our body, the better job we do of stimulating the muscles of our body, right? Most of us in today's day and age live a more sedentary life and it's just because of technology. I'm an active guy, I work out all the time, I have two young kids, I'm always on my feet moving around. Guess what? I'm still not active enough. <laughs> not compared to what I was doing in my 20s when I had hours a day to just run around and play with my friends and work out and do all this stuff because it was all about me. In my life today, I have to worry about you know, my wife, I have to worry about my kids, I have to worry about my job. I have a lot of other needs and other things pulling me away from focusing on me. So regardless of how much you feel you're moving in your day from start to finish, you're probably not as active as you once were when you were younger. And so we need to go out of our way to incorporate movements and movement patterns that get our body moving in lots of different directions, up and down, side to side, um, twisting and turning, and moving more, uh, and I've said this in past videos, moving more like kids move, more athletic, more dynamic movement. And the more you do that, where you break away from so much just traditional lifting all the time, where you can move just your body weight in different ways, stretching and using all the muscles of your body from head to toe, the better job you're gonna do of offsetting all that sitting, all of that kind of sedentary living that we have throughout our day to day. And again, even if you're going to the gym, you're very active, you're running, you're jogging, you're swimming, you're biking, you're hiking, and you're hitting the gym three, four workouts a week, that's great. But be mindful that 
people get very comfortable with doing the same types of activity and then that's all they do. So just try to be as um, comprehensive, I should say maybe, uh, with your activity as possible. And be, uh, you know, be very, you know, try yoga if you've never done it. Try Tai Chi, you know, go for a hike in the woods if you find your, most of your activity just coming from the, from the gym. Um, you know, go swimming, go to the beach with your kids and just get killed by the waves for two or three or four hours, you know? Um, it, so anything you can do that really gets your body doing a lot of different types of activity and, and movement will really help uh, to bring balance back to a lot of muscles where, you know, we, again, we get so caught up in, in just training one particular way, so it's very one-dimensional. We wanna be you know, like three-dimensional when it comes to how we activate the muscles of our body, which really comes down to how uh, structural, uh, structural, the structural integrity of our body, how strong our bones are. So when we put forces in, in different ways on our body, uh, that helps to strengthen those bones later in life so that when we do fall, we do trip and go down as we get older, our bones can, can take that fall because they're strong, they're fortified because they've been tested in so many different angles and ways that those bones aren't brittle, they're strong, just like they, they are when, when, we're, when we're younger. So I encourage you, just get that daily movement in there and think back to the things you love to do, uh, physical activity when you were younger, and try to somehow incorporate that into your days and weeks. And you'll feel better, and it does so much for your mental state too, uh, moving in all those different directions. So five essentials to life, things that we're, we're taking for granted or abusing or neglecting. Take stock, evaluate for yourself. How do those five measure up? And give yourself maybe a little bit of a grade or a score. And then start to implement some change. So replace some bad habits with some good habits. And I assure you that things will get better. You'll probably just have a better mindset. You'll have better energy when you wake up. You'll, you'll fall asleep faster. You'll sleep better. You'll wake up feeling more refreshed. You'll be breathing better. Like, oh, there's so much that good that comes of just focusing on the basics, the foundations to life. We all are in search of some magic fix or magic pill. Just focus on these five essentials and all things will improve for you, I promise. Uh, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, leave some comments or questions below. I'm sure I'll get some, some interesting responses to this. Uh, subscribe to the Critical Bench YouTube channel and don't forget, the three-day immune boosting protocol is in the pinned comment below. So if you wanna find out a way to really do something really good for your immune system in just 72 hours, you got some reading there and I know you'll like it. Thanks for checking this video out and we'll see you soon.